welcome to the complete animation of Meg from Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. This is one of the most interesting streaming exclusive movies I've ever seen. And like, I, like with all streaming exclusives, I am very disappointed that it is an, an exclusive and isn't going to see a United States, you know, at least a Blu-ray release. But... I didn't know what to think going into this movie. I remember seeing one of the uh, first promo images and thinking, oh, wow, chicken hair. It's like a guy that's like half rabbit, half chicken with a bunch of chicken parts on him. And I thought that looked kind of weird. And turns out he does look kind of weird. And the movie is kind of based on that. It's, um... It's kind of weird how they made the main character into something that is so blatantly not, like, entirely attractive. And I kind of like that. Like, it's different. And the character Meg is there to sort of be a another, an analog to that, um... They call a lot of attention to the fact that she's pretty unpopular just because she's a skunk. And it's like, they're perfect friends. And one of the things that I really like about um, Meg in this movie is she is competent, but she's not perfect. Um, but And she and Chicken Hair have like no chemistry outside of just being friends. There is zero romance in this movie and i like that because it's like zootopia did the whole thing where you know two animals of different species basically were in a romantic relationship and i'm glad that this movie is distancing itself from zootopia speaking of zootopia there's a lot about this movie that sort of reminded me of zootopia um but there's also a few good differences, especially visually. You see, um, in Zootopia, they spent a lot of time hammering in the, uh, the scale of the different species of animals. And so, like, Judy Hopps, she's a rabbit, and she, when she's right next to some other animal like, you know an elephant or a horse or a wolf she's pretty darn small but here in chicken hair they they equalize the heights a whole lot more i don't think there are any rodent characters i don't remember if there were but the the sort of similar size is interesting because chicken hair is about the same size as just about anything else although there are some animals that are just bigger like you know the rhino character that was there in one scene and then there is some other characters like i don't know but i i do think it's interesting that they equalize the sizes a bunch and one of my favorite things about meg and her character is that when she finds out more about like how chicken hair operates he you know he's super embarrassed about it he's like ugh you know meg was actually kind of cool and now she knows that i'm a total weirdo but she is just geeking out about it the entire time she thinks that it is the coolest thing ever and i really like that um i guess one of the things that also differentiates this movie from Zootopia is Zootopia was nothing but mammals and also didn't have any primates. But I guess in that way, the chicken hair and the hamster of darkness is kind of closer to sing in its world because it has other characters like reptiles and birds that are part of its anthropomorphic cast. But let's talk about just, like, the world of chicken hair really quick. This is a really interesting bit of world building. It's like, we've seen a lot of movies that riff off of 
Indiana Jones and sort of that genre of movie of being, you know, high flying adventures going into ancient ruins to find the treasure. But this movie, it takes that trope and turns it into a world. It's like, what if there's an entire world where everything everywhere is all about that? And it's like really cool how it does it. The there's competitions to see who can, you know, run through the uh, crumbling temple gauntlet. There's like entire libraries filled with nothing but, you know, tales of the ancient temples and the treasures that lie within this. This movie takes tropes and may goes so far into them that it goes like beyond being a trope and into world building it's really cool and i could totally see a bunch of people thinking that this movie isn't any good because of how what it does with those tropes but i think it's actually refreshing i am totally in the camp that there are that if you take something that, you know, you might see, like, like, especially in fantasy. If you take a fantasy setting and you say, oh, this is super generic, but then you lean into it a ton, you can end up going full circle and it, like, leans into its generic stuff so much that it ends up being unique. A perfect example of that is the Trine Games with how they are it's like they are so firmly in the lighthearted fantasy fairy tale sort of a thing that there is basically nothing like it it it's really interesting you can be so generic that you end up being unique now this flashback sequence is actually pretty neat i don't know if it's actually stop motion i, w I think it is though i think that these are real models and a camera and if it isn't i wouldn't be surprised because that's just how cg is these days yeah this this movie is a, also interesting because it shows exactly what you can do when you have more mature um 3d tech it's like this movie does not have a huge budget and you can tell but at the same time I think it visually punches above its weight class because, you know, visuals like this, 10 years ago, a budget like this would get you something like Alpha and Omega. I'm not going to comment about that movie's qualities at the moment, but I will say that it, it visually it was limited a lot by its budget. Like, back, back in 2010, you could have a 3D movie that looked really good. But not with the budget that that movie had. I think it had a $20 million budget. And I, I don't know what the budget of Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness is, but it's probably less than $50 million. And the fact that it turned out as good as it did is just a testament to how advanced 3D tools are. And it's only going to get better as as the technology progresses. And I think a bunch of it is just um, low lower budget workstations for animators keeps getting better and better. I think that these smaller movies are are going to be the source of some of my favorite movies coming forward. A bunch of it is about... they're unique like there's no movie like this this is a very unique movie and i like unique let's talk about meg's design so meg is a skunk and it's like when you think about the distinctive features of skunks you get basically that they've got a big white stripe on their black bodies and that's about it. 
But when you also think about it, it's like, oh yeah, they've also got pretty prominent tails. And so Meg, you know, she does a she has a pretty good design for being a skunk. She has a a big tail. In fact, I think that watching the movie, the most distinctive feature of Meg is her tail. And they did a really good job with it. I really like the way that the fur on her tail were, looks. And I also really like how light sort of passes through it. It's almost like it's translucent around the edges. It's a very appealing tale. One of the things that I wish Skunks had in real life so that her character could have it is bigger ears. But yeah, if you look at Skunks in real life, they got pretty small ears. And I say that because I really like when characters have big expressive ears. Like, going back to when I made my video about the complete animation of Judy Hopps from Zootopia, I just kept on gushing about how much I loved her ears. And Meg, like, she doesn't have ears like that. But, with that said, her ears are actually surprisingly expressive sometimes. There's some scenes where it's like, yeah, her ears could be more, but... They're, they they didn't use them in that exact sequence, but during some of the sequences where they do have her ears moving, they're actually pretty expressive. But obviously when it comes to big ears, the character that takes the cake is Chicken Hair himself. His ears are massive. Like, his ears are so long he can sit on his ears. And... You know, in the, in the finale of the movie, it turns out that he can use his ears to glide, which is at the same time awesome, but also not realistic at all. But again, you know, we're in a fantasy world that's all about Indiana Jones style adventures, and the main character is a crossbreed between an avian and a mammal, like in terms of, and it's also, you know, walking, talking animals. Yeah, in terms of things not being realistic, Chicken Hair being able to glide with his oversized ears is not what we need to be worried about. And I think that the, you know, the, this movie, it has, you know, its overall message that is, you know, kind of geared towards kids. And I think that in terms of having, you know, a story like that, this movie actually did a pretty good job of having something that's a little bit more unique and not as cliche. It's like in a movie that has an entire world that is nothing but one huge cliche and it ends up being unique because of it. Chicken Hair, its big message is that he wanted to be something he isn't he wanted to be just a normal rabbit he didn't want to be the you know half chicken half hair thing that he is and he tried to hide it he tried to hide it by wearing boots that made it look like he had regular rabbit feet he tried to hide it by wearing a hat all the time that got in the way but hid you know, the feather on the top of it, the feathers on the top of his head. He, like, he tried so hard to be what he wasn't, and that was why he failed at the beginning. At the very beginning, he had to run through the gauntlet, and because of all the stuff that he was carrying, it made it so that he just couldn't do it. But, as his adventure continues throughout the movie, he loses those things. Gets rid of the cumbersome you know foot boots he gets rid of the jacket that just doesn't do anything for him like as he gets rid of all of these things that he was trying to use to cover himself he actually ends up become being good like by the by the end of the movie when he runs through the gauntlet again he is able to complete it no problem and he completes it on like extra hard difficulty because that's just how good he is 
And so, yeah, I think that that is a good message. Pretending to be something that you aren't and just limiting yourself because you think that it'll help you to fit in instead of just being who you are is... Yeah, it's it's a good message. And it's so much better than, you know, we need to accept other people for their differences. Holy cow. This movie is about accepting yourself because of how different you are. And this is, and it's just like, this is how you were born. It's like, Meg, she was a skunk. And she was put upon and ostracized her entire growing up life because of it. And she didn't like it. But when she finally was like, you know what? I don't need other people's approval. I'll, the only approval I need is my, is myself. And she became a whole lot happier after that. Sure, she might not have been able to have, you know, as many friends as she would have liked. But at least she didn't hate herself because of who she was. And as heavy-handed as it was, she did a good job of helping Chicken Hair to learn the same lesson. The... Yeah, so I am surprised at just how good of a movie Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness ended up being. I'm not going to say it's a masterpiece or anything, but there is a lot that I really like about it. And uh, is this a movie I recommend? Do what I say to anybody, you should see Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. I don't know. I... I think that this is one of those movies that was made for someone like me. There's, yeah, there's like two audiences. There's, you know, the kids on Netflix who just like are always scrolling through things and will watch, you know, anything that looks even vaguely interesting. And then there's me who wants to see every feature length animated film ever. And because I just love animation and all the things that it can do, talking animals, you know, walking, talking anthropomorphic animals is one of the best things that animation can provide. And it's kind of weird. There aren't as many of these movies as you would think. You'd think, oh, animation has been around since, you know, the 1920s or a little bit before that. But, you know, it's this art form is roughly 100 years old. And you would think that given all that time, we would have a lot more content like this, but when you really look at the entire canon of anthropomorphic animal movies, there really aren't that many of them. You, like, there's a... I think that one of the things that animation is kind of wasted on is just human characters. Like, let's take a look at... Oh, Don Bluth's Anastasia. Anastasia is a good movie. In fact, it's a really good movie. Good story, good characters, good songs. Oh my goodness. Good villain. Like, Anastasia is a good movie. But at the same time, it's animated. And it, it didn't really need to be. Like, you could tell the exact same story using live action you wouldn't even need that many special effects like you'd have to change some things like you know rasputin being stuck in limbo like that area like that one did benefit from animation but there's a lot about that movie that didn't need it but this movie chicken hair and the hamster of darkness animation is the only way that this movie could ever be made so like, I don't know. Like, I guess not totally wasted, but I feel like there's more potential in animation when using animal characters. Ugh. And the thing that really grinds my gears is that there was going to be an animated Wings of Fire series. In fact, I think Netflix was the one who wanted it until they canceled it. And Dragons... Oh boy, dragons are the bread and butter for animation. And if you think that there aren't very many, you know, walking, talking animal movies, wait until you see how few dragon movies there are. How to Train Your Dragon, I don't think really counts. It's very different. It, it, yeah, it's dragons aren't really what I think of when I think dragons. I'm not saying, like, it's good, but 
I don't think that How to Train Your Dragon really gives me the dragon fix I'm looking for. But, yeah, so Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. I think that this movie, it flew under the radar for a lot of people, and I think that's a shame. I think it's pretty good, but at the same time, I think that the people who would like it are already aware of it and have probably found a way to see it. But yeah, I hope that this movie gets a sequel. I, I think that this world is worth exploring even more. Thank you so much for watching this long, rambling video. But, oh yeah, I forgot about this. There's some concept art. This is good concept art. I really like concept art for characters. It's like, I like to see what ideas they had and what ended up working. Thanks for watching.